All right, it's Tuesday of our short week. It is the 13th, and we are going to look at one more thing with line graphs, tricky line graphs. There are some errors that we have to fix, um, and then you'll turn in that graph for today. All right, so let's look at this graph. This is a graph of the average global temperatures for the last, give or take, 150, 200 years, right from 1880 to about 2020. Um, and if we're looking, it doesn't look like it's changed very much. So if you were looking at this graph, you might not be super impressed with the, the change in the average global temperature. But what I want to posit is that the, the context is very important. Right? So a graph's vertical increments, that's the distance between the, the tick marks on the up and down, the, the vertical side of the graph, should help you make sense of the data. So if you zoom in or zoom out, that changes what the graph looks like. And you need to make sure that you pick these increments, the spacing, to make sense. So let's go back here and look. We're looking at change in temperature. So the difference between zero and 70 degrees is a pretty big difference, right? Like you're gonna change what you wear depending on what that temperature difference is, right? We're looking at global temperature. This is the temperature of the whole world, kind of if you look at the average. That's a, that's a pretty big change if you're looking at the whole world. Um, another way to look at this is, what if I were to ask you um, how old you are, right? like I did for the beginning of our class. If I were to ask you to measure your age, would I ever put down zero for a person's age? No, because they haven't been born yet, right? So would it make sense for us to show the zero for our class? Probably not. Likewise, would it make sense if this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Like, would it make sense to show five for the age of the kids in this class? Are there any five-year-olds in our class? No, because context is important. So in this particular case, we need to be thinking about what this means. And so in order for the average temperature of the world, of the globe, of the earth to change, little changes matter a whole lot. Like we have to heat the ocean up a whole bunch in order for it to go up one degree, right? Because it's a gigantic place. So I think we should zoom in, right? I'm not going to make you type in each of these data points because, oh my goodness, that would take forever. So instead, what I'm asking you to do is to open up Schoology. Um, let me get mine showing here. Open up Schoology and go to week six. And I want you to look at Tuesday, which is Deceptive Data Charts That Cheat Part 3 for Tuesday. And I want you to open up the attachment because I've created this graph for you. That way you don't have to do it. Remember, Oops, use this little button up here so that you can open it in Keynote. When you get it into Keynote, please rename it with your first and last name and the class period so that I don't have 87 of DME Deceptive Data Lesson 3s. Remember, rename it like this, add your first and last name and what period you are in, and then click Edit so that we can get in and change stuff. Nope. All right, let's get started. Now that you have this on your screen, we're going to be editing and formatting. Do you remember how to format? Right, we're going to turn on our graph and then click on the format button. And we're going to be in the data menu. So once you're in the format menu, go ahead and select data. And we're looking at the y axis, which is the vertical one. And let's click on that menu so we can see. And here's where we can see how to set the minimum and the maximum. So let's make the minimum be 50. Right, so the minimum is 50, and the maximum, we'll say, is 60. Oops. Let's do that. All right. If I get out of there, it looks a lot different, right? Um, maybe I don't want these temperatures to be 
like this. I want whole temperatures. So let's get back into this menu here. And let's say that I want there to be, uh, sorry, clicking on the wrong. I'm going to do five steps because that makes it be whole numbers. So that's one thing that we can see. Uh, that's a very different thing. So if we're looking, maybe we want to add a trend line. So remember to add a trend line, turn on your graph, go back into the format, and it's in the chart menu all the way at the bottom. Uh, the trend line, we're going to turn it on. So let's make it be linear. And maybe we want our trend line to be, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't like that. I'm going to fix it because <laughs> I don't like it at all. So let's make that be, uh, I'll make it a gray trend line. Right. And I'm a little bit happier with that now. But I still think this is too big of a spread because really, if we're thinking about heating up the whole world, really five degrees is better. So let's change our minimum and our maximum. So I'm going to go into format, into data, into the y-axis, and I'm going to make this be, uh, how about 55 and, whoops, 55. And then the highest one will be, uh, let's do 57. Let's do a two, diff two degree difference. Oh, it doesn't work because we, ex we exceeded. So I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to go back in to make that one be 60 again. Really, we could make it be 59. That looks a little better. But again, now my degrees are off. So I'm going to get back into this format, linear. Um, there. That looks better. Because now it's one degree, right? All right. So now I've adjusted my graph. I've zoomed in. I want you to do the same thing. So pause, zoom in adjust your minimum and your maximum. Then I want you to answer these two questions, complete sentences, and then turn it in. Remember you use a little more. You choose export and PDF to turn into Schoology. All right.